Hello handheld gamers and welcome to another video. So today's uh, a video on an emulator. We're going to look at RPCS3, which is a PlayStation 3 emulator uh, for Windows. So I've tried this emulator before. I've used uh, 0 0.0.222, I think it was previously, and I've not had a lot of success, particularly with Resistance 2, which was a game that wasn't playable previously, or it was kind of borderline. I'd, uh, bugs that would cause it to crash. Now it's classed as playable and there's an updated version of RPCS3 not point not point two four. so we'll see what goes on with this. I've done a bit of messing about so we have the turbo button in, uh, turned on and for power saving plans we have created one called RPCS3 specifically for this and what I've done in there specifically is under processor management I have tweaked the maximum processor state to 70%. So that should in theory mean that it restricts the amount of power going to the CPU side of the APU, as I, as I understand it anyway. And from what I've seen, it does appear that it keeps the clock speeds down. So we will see. We'll try loading the game up. So what should happen, now I'm currently on, on power. I'm on a battery pack at the moment because my... Uh, my one explorer is kind of low, so just bear that in mind. But we've got a turbo button enabled. Uh, what we should hopefully see here is the game running a little bit better. Now, RPCS3 settings, I've just left it set to using the Vulkan API, 720p, which is stock, and I enabled the FSR option within RPCS3, and that's the only change I've made. I've left everything stock. So uh, previously, we had uh, 0.22 uh, version of this... Um, emulator. I had problems where things like um, your main character's eyes in the loading screen were, were just they weren't rendering properly at all. That appears to have gone away. So some of the strange rendering issues that were there appears to have gone. It looks great on the 1x player screen by the way. It may not look quite as good on the capture screen, but it looks amazing on the 1x player screen. Even though it's only 720p, it's just it's so sharp, so lovely. So we used to get a lot of stuttering at the Insomniac logo loaded, and that stayed pretty much solid at 30 FPS the whole time. So it does appear to be running a little bit better. Maybe that's some of this is down to my tweaks. I'm really not sure. I mean, as you can see here, the CPU is still ramping up to 4.22 uh, gigahertz. So I don't know. I don't know if I have made a difference by changing that power plan. We are knocking on the door of 32 watts at the CPU. So we'll go campaign, we'll load a level, we'll load the SRPA airfield level, because I know that one gave me lots of problems, it's quite an early level, and what, what happened in this one was it would stutter down to 1 or 2 FPS, and it was it was basically unplayable. So what I'm hoping to see here is if we're just, just for it to stick Command. as close as possible to 30. Now we can see it's just loading here, it's at the low 20s, the game always started terrible. As you see it's peaked back up to 27-ish, 30 there, so... See graphic, but still nice looking game. So this is one of the very early PS3 games. Let's just see if we can do this, right? Go. Let me run. Follow this guy. I have pissed him off apparently. Yep, yep, yep. We'll stick together, all right. So let's look at the FPS. So it's dropping down to 17 there, but as you can see. It's not stuttering, it's just dropping the odd frame. Or dropping quite a few frames, but it still feels playable. I don't actually know what um, what this game ran at natively. I know the first game was, was not massively well optimised because it was our release game. As you can see, when you start getting a little bit more enclosed areas, it speeds up again. The sound quality is pretty good. I mean, the frame time graph's a bit peaky. I still love this game. And I really must. I must get around to completing this one because I, I completed the first game on PS3 and then never ever went back to the the rest of the games. And I have them all on disc, so I don't feel bad about playing this. So oh, get shot to pieces. Oh, I died. I'm better than that. Okay, we'll try that bit again. 
Now see, it's going over 30 FPS there. I saw that went up to 30, uh, 34 for a little second there. So, you know, that's that's a good sign. There we go. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Let's pick a bull's eye up just to keep us going. No, I don't think we need it. So you see it's running actually pretty well. It's just getting used to the dodgy controls. Because, you know, back in the days before the sort of standard control map and it's like, well, it works good. So I think I'm going to chalk this up as a slight win. Okay, we're still not getting a solid 30 FPS all the time. But that was playable. Okay, maybe I'm not so good at the game, but that was playable, in my view. Yep, it's pretty good. So, is the RPCS3 emulator ready for the next player? Well, just about. And remember, everyone, if you like what I do, please like, share, and subscribe. We're brilliant if you could, uh, if you've not already joined the subscription, please do, please follow my videos, it makes a big difference, about 95% of the people that watch the videos are not subscribed, every subscription really helps the channel, um, so thanks for watching, hopefully this was quite a quick video, I think we're about 7 minutes, so I think now's the perfect time to stop, thanks for watching.